Say that again. If the hegemony of the anti-vax movement is breaking now, it's incredible because it's great for the country. It's great for our health. It's incredible politically because it's breaking a core, another core message of the Republicans, you know? The extremists, the radicals, you know? It's, I've been saying, man, this shit can't hold because it's based, the whole foundation of it is a fraud. You can't build a fucking political movement over a fraud in America. You just can't. It's not gonna happen. It isn't being embraced by anybody but those people. The rest of the fucking country is looking at them like they're nuts, and they are. They're out of their minds. So, if this uh, return of the virus, if the Delta variant is, is gonna break the hegemony of the anti-vax movement, it's really important. It's really important in every way you can think about it. Now, yeah, how about country. based on what's happened before? I mean, all the uh, rallies uh, seemingly spreading all of this radically and the people getting infected and still cheering on this movement. Uh, this is what I'm saying. I mean, if, it, if, it, if this breaks that bizarre behavior, if it breaks that bizarre behavior, which is being prompted, fomented, supported by, by you know, a party and its leadership and its media as a, as a sound response to the pandemic, if that shit breaks, if this is breaking that, it's, it's very fucking significant. But it's been going on for years. What has been going on for years? The, the disinformation, for instance, with Fox. Yeah, but I get that. Yeah, we had we, it, the disinformation is, is, is So you're saying on. it's going to change suddenly? The, the political party that, that, re, that re, relies on, on misinformation, disinformation, outright lying and fraud has built a whole, you know, a whole scaffolding of reason, what they think is reason out of it. And I just say, you know, it's only reason to the people that, you know, that are embracing it. But the rest of America is, is, is watching, this, watching this in horror and fascination. And so you think the 80% of Republicans supporting the former president, uh, that there's a change in that, that, that there's an inflection point going on that's happened suddenly because of this? No. I, what I think is that it, it, this all this is weakening that position. They're going to hang on to it. They're going to hang on to it. But I mean, they represent it, it, a minority the, of the Americans. history is one thing after another that's you know unprecedented after unprecedented after unprecedented, and and the force moves on. Don't understand what you're saying. I'm saying so many crazy things have happened that, that one would think people with common sense would say, hey, this is bullshit. And we're we not, have. We're not going to take it People anymore. of common sense have expressed that in two really important elections since and the, 2018 and the major and 2020. major political party, 80% of them, in spite of all, everything that's happened. Can't account for that. We, we, we don't understand it. Even, even when they try to explain it to us. It, we don't understand it because it makes no sense. Why does it make no sense? Because it's built on a foundation of scaffolding of fraud, religious fraud, political fraud, racist fraud, economic fraud, pure ass fraud. They fucking elected, they elected a president who was nothing but a fraud, as we learn, incompetent, lazy. So. And you have a powerful media channel yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it, it, yeah, exactly. Both the mainstream progressive media pay attention to it, and their own media could promote it. I'm just saying that you know it's not the mainstream. It's not a mainstream thought. It's still outside the mainstream, getting further from the mainstream as this gets crazier and crazier. Like a party whose leadership denies the pandemic and encourages their people not to mask and not to get vaccines. How do you build a political movement over, over a party that's trying to kill its own supporters? It can't be done. It's too crazy. So I'm just saying that's a, that's a, that is a minority. That is a, it, it, it is a tight and large box, but it's just a box in a, in a, in a warehouse of America. It's a little box. It's not a little box. It's a major box, but it's just a box in the warehouse, man. And the warehouse is full of people who are looking at this and we're not going to let it happen. And we have 2018. Big win for progressive. 2020, huge win for progressive. Joe Biden beat Donald Trump by 7 million votes 
in, a, in an election in which there was no third party candidate, hard to do, hard to beat an incumbent president with no third party candidate. And I can't remember the last time it happened in my lifetime, but it's been a long time, if ever. So, question, what, what about the rise in nationalism and fascism worldwide, uh, aside from in the United States? I, I, I don't know. And white supremacy. Uh, white people, are, uh, but white people feel threatened. Some white people feel threatened, and they're powerful enough to like everybody, everybody in their corner to feel threatened. I want to just say as a white person in America, a Jewish white person in America, I do not feel threatened. I do not feel threatened. I am counting on my, I am a patriot counting on other patriots across America to make sure the next election we win again. And the next election we win again. We are the majority. And you, not, not that crazy. And you feel like the good guys in America are going to outweigh the fascist dictators of the whole world. Who are I don't now, know. Who have now come I can't tell about the fascist dictators. Wedded. We beat them son of bitches once. Those fascist dictators. My dad, your dad fought in that war, so yeah, we beat them once. I'm not. I, I don't know. I can't account for that. I'm not an expert on that fascist. I'm just saying, it ain't gonna happen here. Would you not say there's more of them now? There, there's more threats, but you also notice that the democracies are holding their own. Yeah, democracies are being challenged. I mean, it, things happen in history. Democracies, people get challenged. It's human nature. Is but the, where have they take? Where are the fascists taking over? I mean, Boris, England. He's not a fascist. He's a nut. Like, like. Not Modi. He's not a fascist. Strong man. He's not a fascist. He's got a working working Democrat. Uh, Africa. Uh, yeah, some Eastern of Europe, and there's some countries. Uh, no, Belarus. Uh, Turkey. Turkey. Brazil. I guess Turkey. I don't know Brazil. But they, why are they fascists? They're out of their mind. These well, people. no, you know, strong men. Yeah, they're, they're fascists. Sort of... You know, I mean, they're, they're nutty people. <laughs> but and, you know, we we elected a nut. Any con any comment on conspiracy theories? Uh, reality, you know. I mean, it's part and parcel of the of of, of the politic. As I say, the scaffolding and foundation scaffolding of the public party is fraud. So, of course, you need conspiracies to you know support the fraud sufficiently to convince your supporters that it's real when it's not. I mean. I don't deal with conspiracies, you know? It's not a thing with me. I can see through it, right? I can see through it. Most people can see through it. Some can't. I mean, I know some really, really intelligent people that are into conspiracy theories. I, it's entertaining, and maybe it's a game. But you can't, you can't talk to a journalist about conspiracy theories, you know what I mean? Our whole deal is to break open the conspiracy, right? <laughs> Let air into the box. Is there an international uh, uh, group of uh, journalists who are united to uh, see and have the same vision of a of a healthy world evolving without violence? Oh, I don't know. You know, I don't know. Are there? What are you saying? Are there? Like yourself? Are there optimistic journalists? Well, not just optimistic. Are there, are there but, journalists but, out there who don't? Who have can, the key principle of cynicism guiding their every move and career. Who, who can see the missing links yeah, to, yeah, to, yeah. to how, they, lots of, how, lots how of we can move see. forward together. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of writers. The thing is, the thing is that you have to remember that that when I was young, I, the, the kinds of things that I'm I'm trying, the, the way that I put these ideas together and the data and facts that I I, I use to make this case and, and form that narrative. I mean, you know, I've been doing this a long time. You know? Yeah, and it's worth mentioning the nature of your work is environmental. Yeah. It involves the whole earth. You yeah. aren't, you aren't dealing and with just And history, politics, and, and industry, and natural resource. Environmental journalism, when I started, was a was a was a uh, sidelight beat in mainstream media. Um, not not but not seen as a, a real frontline beat. Interesting, important, right? And the New York Times had some of the first. Gladwin Hill was one in the 50s and the 60s, working out of Los Angeles. Did tremendous reporting about the atomic energy's nuclear waste bomb program, exploding over 100 uh, nuclear weapons in the desert and letting the 
fall out, fall all over Utah and the rest of the country. What are the most exciting uh, journalist stories you've personally been involved with lately? How about LeBron, lately? How about LeBron James? What, uh, what's he have to do with anything? LeBron James. <clears throat> you, LeBron James can stake, take, take a stake in the victory of 2020, Joe Biden's victory in 2020, because he both formed a group and inspired a lot of people, African Americans, young African Americans, to register and vote. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Biden's victories in Atlanta, Detroit, Philadelphia, Chicago, but certainly Atlanta, Georgia, Atlanta, Philadelphia, and Detroit. You know, he, he, he'll be recognized. He was recognized. I recognize him for that. Um, why, why LeBron James, you know, he's one of the, one of the leading members of his generation globally. The good he's done, the excellence he's, he's, he's uh, displayed in his work, his diligence, his persistence, his amazing freaking skills, how he plays for his teammates and how he wins, you know, how he, how his family life, his wife, you know, his teammates. And he's, he's, he's a leader, man, you know. And we'll hear more about it. People, people are kind of, his, his teammates are kind of quiet about LeBron, right? right? But after he retires, you'll hear more about, you know. How about, about how about up in Akron? What about up in Akron? Well, he was raised in Akron, born and raised in Akron, and um, what I was there for was to write about how he's become a real estate developer there, a public interest developer in Akron, building yeah. schools working with the school district there, built a school and, and funded, funded the renovation of a building for the school. Um, he has housing for the kids around the school. It's called an I Promise program. So it's designed to move underprivileged kids, you know, into successful lives from the time they get into school. It's from second to eighth grade, I think. I think it's a second to eighth grade. And he's got agreements with the University of Akron, so they can go to school there if they want, for free. He's mm -hmm. like he's almost like Muhammad Ali, move, moving everyone forward. Yeah, and he's he's politically he's politically courageous. Can consider that he endorsed Hillary Clinton publicly, endorsed Biden, form formed the the his I what was it I vote I vote campaign to get to inspire. African American young African Americans and young African Americans to register and vote. Yeah. Big that's a big deal. That's a really big deal. And he's made a billion dollars, so you know he's making it work. Yeah. He's so making it work. Yeah, since you were with Louisville late night uh, a year ago, uh, certain events have happened on the West Coast, fires. <laughs> There's been flooding in Germany and India and China and the US. Um, the word unprecedented has never been used before, just with the weather, not to mention politics. But I'm just curious if you, it seems like we're closer to people catching on to the implications of the truth that you stand for and are extrapolating, sharing with us. Yeah, 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 people people are getting it. This was the year that, that um, the you know, really dangerous ramifications of climate change became clear. Do, We've had it all, do, man. Do, do, you you think, do you think, you know, I'm in Texas freezing and... Texas know. freezing and then going into drought. Yeah, yeah. you know. The, look, we, we've had, we've had, I, you know, I could say Mother Earth is pushing back. Mm -hmm. That's what's happening. And the consequences are significant, you know. Yeah. All over the world, simultaneously now. And the media, the media, the mainstream media is paying attention. Notice, these things are in the top of the news. This is the top news story of the summer, is what's happening ecologically around the world. They're paying attention. And they're putting the, they're, they're putting the, putting the thread together. So it's powerful. Really? Yeah. Fox? I've been, I've been, I don't know about Fox. I've, I've been watching Fox. I haven't seen too much about what, it. What? What? Fox is a news organization. It's a, it's, a, it's a propaganda organization. Why do they call it Fox News? I don't know. Because they, they like everything else, it's a fraud. <laughs> you know, everything else that's going on 
conservative America is kind of a fraud, and so is Fox News as a news organization. It's not a news organization. It's a lie organization. And it's become a death merchant. Imagine, imagine a television network in the United States becoming a death merchant. Tell me about that. What do you mean tell you about that? They, they, they've discouraged people from masking. They've encouraged lawmakers that say masking or not masking is a constitutional issue. They have a constitutional right to do what they want. And I say, yeah, I have a constitutional right to protect my, me and my family and you can kiss my ass and we're, we're going to force you to fucking mask. You know, you want to go there, we'll force it because they have no constitutional right to put America, the rest of America in danger, in, per in peril, the economy, people's lives, the threat. So Fox is a, is a um, fiction, fiction death merchant. True or false, Fox uh, successfully, very dramatically undermined the uh, scientific response to the pandemic. True. By design. By design. In order to in order to recover the in order to recover the viewership, the increasingly crazy wing of the fucking conservative movement, the extremist movement, which was beginning to head to other networks, smaller networks, losing Fox was losing its audience, they went they went to get those viewers by being just as fucking out of their mind as those networks. OAM and the rest. So. And how is that going to help them politically in the long run? I have no idea. What's, I mean, the, what's the logic of it? And there is no logic. It's fraud. They have no logic. The, fraud, the logic is to continue the fraud. You know, that's, that's you know, if you say that the pen, if you say that the virus is a, new, a democratic new hoax, that's where you're starting from. Mm -hmm. And that Anthony Fauci is a devil. <laughs> Who said that? Well, I mean, that, that's essentially what they're saying. That he's a devil? Yeah, that's essentially <laughs> what they're saying. So, you know, they're attacking Fauci for whatever, you know. I mean, the governor, yes. the governor of Florida. Yes. Said he was going to protect his, his, his constituents from the Fauci-ouchie. The Fauci-ouchie? Yeah. Well, he's funny, isn't he? Yeah, well. How's this possible? How can legislators get away with this shit? Because of with the, that's where they're, that, with well, they, they don't get away with us, but they get away with their constituents. Yeah, they get away with their, with their constituents. So you're optimistic. I'm very optimistic. I'm very optimistic. I'm not the only one. There are people out there who are learned, serious, Veteran, experienced, articulate, who will tell you? I think we're going to be okay. Who knows, but I think we're going to be okay. I, I, not only do I think we're going to be okay, I've said that the 2020s is going to be a time of flourishing of America. How about the world? <clears throat> I can't account for the world, but I will say this. This year I did a project, a really tough, complicated project to assess how well the world was doing in providing humanity, water, sanitation, and hygiene. And this is a program that's been international by big institutions since the 1970s. And there's been 400 billion, this, you know, just constant dollars invested in this, now $20 billion a year. And it's producing results. It really is. Many, many more results in Anybody working in the, the sector had acknowledged until I said, wait a second, you guys are always complaining. You're always not enough money. Well, there isn't probably. And we're not doing enough and people are getting, and I'm like, wait a second, hold the wheels. You know, you've got, you've put, you've given 2 billion people that wouldn't have had clean water, clean water. 2 billion. 2 billion. 2 billion. Wow. You've provided 2.3 billion people with, you know, safer sanitation. And, you know, you, you've, you've, vastly improve public hygiene. So wait a second, you know, it's complicated, but you've made progress. I mean, what what, what thing have we done in, in the world that's helped two billion people? Not a hell of a lot. You know, the West, I guess, and its economy. But. You know, changing, changing gears just for a second, uh, you know, back a number of years ago, there was a uh, political thing where uh, 
something to do with uh, the transitioning from oil to uh, you know solar energy uh -huh. and uh, and there was also a thing of blue collar workers being left out yeah. and forgotten yeah and, and that somehow the Democrats and Hillary just didn't get it they, they and and they had no idea how, right. how the uh, blue collar people were hurting and that the Republicans really understood that and uh, and uh, so uh, more specifically in Kentucky, you know, there's a lot of coal mines that we've heard are shutting down and people are losing their jobs. And those were high paying jobs. I mean, uh, and so uh, from, you know, your studies in the, in the Kentucky local area, do you have any comment on, on what's going on there? Where's their hope for Kentuckians? I mean, the hope from Kentuckians, the hope for Kentuckians is that it lies in the center of the most populated region of the country. Kentucky's within a day's drive of almost every major metropolitan area in the United States east of the Mississippi. All right? Okay. So the central the centrality of the state's location east of the Mississippi, near the Atlantic border, Atlantic mm -hmm. coast, is producing remarkable changes in Kentucky's economy right now that people don't really see. Mm -hmm. Item one, Amazon has invested, I think $12 billion within the last decade in Kentucky, $12 billion. Really? Yes. They own, they own a grocery store, right? Whole Paycheck, I call it, Whole Foods. Yeah. They have fulfillment centers all over the state, and they're building their $5 billion air hub for their prime air line, their transport line. Mm -hmm. It's one of the biggest airline, cargo airlines in the world already, mm -hmm. with something like 85 planes. is going to be at the Kentucky, at the Cincinnati airport, which mm -hmm. is in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And around it are lots of fulfillment centers including one for Wayfair, one of the most important, right, largest online market for housing goods and all kinds of other stuff, you know. Very well run the company, Wayfair. So, so what, what about the coal miners? And number the number second one, let me just to give you another example. The second one, which is a, a, which is a really stellar example that's happening in Kentucky, is a company called App Harvest. App, Har App Harvest. They're a greenhouse grower of vegetables, berries, and what else? Legumes, I think. Tomatoes. Tomatoes, vegetables, berries. Mm -hmm. They built the largest greenhouse in the world in Rowan County, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And they opened it last year. And they're a public company, well over, worth over a billion. And they're building a new greenhouse for berries in Somerset. Really? Yeah, like 50 acre one or 15, I mean a big one, really big, big greenhouse. And they're happening and, and the, 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 um, the, the clairvoyant leader of it is a young Kentucky guy named Jonathan Webb. And he's got a partner and they went to the University of Kentucky and they got their bona fides by building solar facilities at, at um, military installations in the south, big solar facilities. So they have, they have a lot of experience in how to manage a big construction project, which is what their company has been yeah. called. They're young, both from Kentucky. And their idea is to provide thousands and thousands of jobs to some extent replace the good paying jobs in the coal industry. So what about the coal industry in Chicago and uh, Kentucky? It's on its way out. Huh? It's historically on its way up. So are there veins of uh, fiber optics to replace the coal veins? Veins of fiber? Yeah, there's plenty of fiber optics. Wherever they want them. There's, it, it's on the way out, you know? And it's been on the way out for 50 years. It's been on the way out since the 1960s as mechanization began to replace workers and then the coal. I didn't tell you how it was. But, you know, I just was up there writing about a government program to support coal, coal jobs. And Biden is all over this and it's going to have a lot... It's going to be a big piece of his. It's already a big piece if they pass the infrastructure bill that they just passed, you know, that they're considering in the Senate, in the House. But it's a really big piece of the 
three plus trillion dollar, what is it, family jobs program bill? I don't know. I don't think you meant to say that Biden's supporting the coal jobs. Biden's supporting the program to replace, you know, to, to help train, retrain, for find new economic opportunity in Appalachia is yeah. what he's doing. Right. I, I thought I misunderstood you that you said there was fiber optics every, everywhere. I thought this was a new new thing coming to eastern Kentucky. And, and, well, the, and that, that would enrich, they need it, broadband that up there. That would enrich uh, job. That would enrich job. Uh, well, I agree. Job opportunities. Kentuckians. Um, the, the, the steady diminishment and wreckage of the American coal industry. Yeah. Right. It's an, an it's an unavoidable and inevitable result of a transition, an industrial transition that humanity makes from time to time. Right. So we went from sail power, right, mm -hmm. to steam power, mm -hmm. and then to diesel power in our shipping, mm -hmm. and we and the world changed. So for the sailing schooner manufacturers and companies, or you know, they evolved. I bet mm -hmm. you a bunch of them became shippers with new technology. Mm -hmm. So. So you have hope. The, 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 the Kentucky Appalachian region has significant potential if it embraces its ecology, mm -hmm. right? And not threaten its ecology, right? Mm -hmm. So you are sitting here in Northwest Michigan, Northern Michigan, with a stellar prime time example of the value of that over time. If you're in oh. a region. If you're in a region that embraces your ecology, not threatens your ecology, your potential for long-term economic gain is significant in this century. Well, what happened here in northern Michigan where we Well, are? we 100, 100 over 100 years ago, every basically every tree in this region and the rest of the region was cut to the ground, clear, clear cut. And then there were terrible fires as the tops dried out. And it, it wrecked our, our very sandy, banked rivers here that are not the same. If you would have seen it then, now you would consider it a modern day environmental catastrophe, which it was. However, Earth has a great capacity to recover, to regrow, to, rebirth, re, to pull itself back together ecologically. And in the 20th century, Michigan was one of the leaders in forming an environmental policy to clean the water, clean the air, preserve the landscape, protect species, pick up, you know, mm -hmm. clean up after the hazardous wastes, you know, protect wetlands. And Michigan was a leader of that among states. And people here, which was lightly populated from much of the 20th century, still is, embraced, had a land ethic. I mean, there was a land ethic here. And steadily built a view that this region, the future rests on securing its environmental values. And the region became beautiful because natural growth and man-made public policy converged. And how, did, how, how are you involved with that personally? I'm involved with it personally. First, I'm an environmental journalist helping explain this. Secondly, I started a, a, a public interest group called the Michigan Land Use Institute in Benzonia, Michigan in 1995 that, that talked about this, that advocated a reasoned approach to economic development around ecological values and local farming and local forestry, right? And the shoreline. That these ecological principles and the natural bounty merged. They merged here and produced one of the great places to live in the, in the world. 
and one of the now you know one of the great places to do business and raise a family and all. I mean, and you feel like this is a model for the whole world, actually. I feel like this. Is, I I feel the consequences here that the, that what happened here between public policy, natural regrowth, and cultural attitudes here, right? People, small towns, leadership, whatever, all merged together to form this place. There is no ethic in this region to wreck it <laughs> under any circumstances. <laughs> that if something of magnitude that has a serious risk to the environmental values and principles of this region will have a hell of a fight to get it done because the body politic people, red, green, blue, black, white, Republican, Democrat, liberal, you know, conservative, it, there's great, great public consensus about the value of the ecological bounty that we have here. Yeah, no, and, not ironical that, that uh, the positivity and, and uh, excitement and vision and hope and faith and understanding that you bring to these issues, and, and Michigan in particular, that uh, on the one hand, it, most of what you're saying is news to me, and for the general public, uh, probably a number of people, when they think of Michigan and they think of water or ecology, they're thinking lead pipes and children with their brains damaged forever, not anything that you're talking about, even though it's related. Yeah, well, I agree. You know, Michigan's taken a beating in the public public opinion and public knowledge. We've had terrible things happen in here. Michigan, Flint, and, you know, kidnapping the governor and attacking the Capitol and, you know, the militia. And, any comment on any of that? What would you like to know about any of that? Well, like what you mentioned about Tim McVeigh, for example. Well, uh, uh, Michigan is capable, as we've seen, of pr pr producing bizarre and dangerous, you know, people and, 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 and uh, movements. It, it is. Um, we can be as stupid as any state in the country, and maybe stupider at times. Um, I don't know what to say about all that, you know. It's a rough time to be American, you know. It's rough. But, it's, but if you look at it in one way, it's always been rough. Depends upon how you looked at it, you know? Yeah. If you were Native American, you would say there has been no time in America. It wasn't rough, right? If you were African American, you would yeah. say in a 400 years, yeah. your people have been in this country. There's never been a time where it's been easy or, yeah. serious, you know, steady. So yeah. I, I guess, you know. Yeah. Right? Or if my ancestors had been, whatever, uh, tortured for uh, generations, yeah. uh, Directly. Yeah, but I, you know, I, yeah, I, I believe in you know the American spirit. I believe in the American spirit. I do. I'm a patriot. Mm -hmm. I'm a bigger patriot, more impressive, more impressive, more devout patriot than the patriots who say they're patriots, right? Because what are they about? You know, they're about fraud and incompetence and insurrection and and extreme extremism. That's what they're about. I mean, you know, that's all they're about: anger. Yeah. Yeah. Grievance. I'm a bigger patriot than any of those people. And I don't even have a gun. And you're not threatened. I'm not what? You're, you're not threatened. You're fearless. I don't feel threatened. No. Do you feel threatened? No. I don't feel threatened. I've never felt threatened. And I'm Jewish. <laughs> Seriously. I'm Think about that. I'm a journalist. I'm Jewish. Never felt threatened in the United States of America. Don't want to feel threatened. Refuse to feel threatened. We'll deal with it if I feel threatened, I guess, right? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? But the country's always kind of been bananas. It's because, what, name me one period where America was not bananas. What, name me one. Well, by comparison, right now, what goes on in the media is, is, as to what's news and what's true uh, versus uh, 20 years ago, it seemed, or whatever, five years ago, any time up to four or five years ago, seems like it's very different. Uh, well, I don't know. Do you ever heard of the big book, Future Shock? Yeah. Right. He described this, this period yeah, what, right? what, what, what did uh, Toppler right? Alvin? Alvin what, Toppler. What, what did he say? Alvin Toppler wrote a book about how fast technology was changing society. That's uh, basically what it was. Yeah. 
made lots of predictions, including development of the internet, computers. Mm -hmm. But basically described the disorder that comes, the disorientation that comes when people think things are changing too much. There's too much chatter and instability in the system. Well, that, he wrote the book in the, when did he publish in the 70s, 80s, 70s? Yeah, something like that. Right? <laughs> so, uh, you know, we all got to grow up. That's all, I, you know, people just got to grow up. We got to, we got to grow up, you know. Sounds like a good message. Yeah. Thanks, Keith. Right.